Having defined a dynamical system, let's now categorize the different types of dynamical systems that can exist. Dynamical systems come in two basic flavors. They can either be linear or nonlinear. What I mean by a linear system is that the functions f sub i on the right-hand side of the basic equation of motion are strictly linear functions of the state coordinates. So for example, f sub 1 equals a11 x1 plus a sub 12 x2 plus dot 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 a sub 1n xn. Then f2 equals a21 x1 plus a22 x2 plus dot dot a2n xn all the way down to f sub n equals a n1 x1 plus a n2 x2 plus dot 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 to all the way to a n n x n. These are strictly linear functions of all the coordinates. Now the basic features of a linear system is first of all, the nice feature is that they're soluble in full detail. Because they're soluble, a downside of it is in some sense they're boring. However, even though they are boring, we will see that understanding linear systems is a useful prelude to understanding the full nonlinear system because very close to a fixed point of the dynamical system, a point where all the coordinates are not changing in time, a place where the flow stops. If one looks locally uh, around a fixed point, one learns a lot about global behavior of the dynamical system. So another feature of linear systems is that they're useful for so-called fixed point analysis. Throughout this course, I'll use the abbreviation FP to denote fixed point. And so looking at the system close to a fixed point turns out to be useful for understanding the global behavior of a general nonlinear system. So in contrast, nonlinear systems are generally not soluble. And because they're not soluble, we have to turn to something other than just analytically solving equations to understand their behavior. And as we're going to see, the crucial technique to understand the behavior of a nonlinear system is to visualize flow in state space by geometric methods. This will be the basic tool that we'll use throughout the course. Now, another feature of dynamical systems is that in addition to being categorized by linear or nonlinear, they're also categorized by the number of degrees of freedom or the number of variables, or equivalently, the dimensionality of the system. And sometimes we'll use the variable d to denote this dimensionality or number of variables. If we start with the simplest case, d equals 1. One-dimensional dynamical systems are easy to understand because the flow in state space is so constrained that what can happen in the long time limit is really quite limited. There's several things that can happen. One is that you can either flow to a fixed point or to plus or minus infinity at long times as t goes to infinity. Or even more trivial is that you could start at a fixed point and remain there. By the definition of a fixed point, you don't move. This characterizes all possible dynamical behaviors of a one-dimensional system. In two dimensions, it's a little bit more interesting because in addition to one, and two also holding, there is three, that you can have closed orbits, or four, one can have spiral in or spiral out to a closed orbit. Another feature of two-dimensional dynamical systems is this feature that if you have some kind of a closed trajectory in state space, say something like this, then if you start inside, you have to stay inside. And you may either go to a fixed point or go to some closed orbit inside of this. Whereas if you start outside, you have to stay outside. There's no chance of going back in. So this notion of demarcating orbits by staying inside or outside of a closed orbit turns out to be a useful simplifying feature of two-dimensional flows. And this we'll see later on is formalized by something known as the poincare ben dixon theorem. Finally, let's look at higher dimensional systems. And it turns out the number of degrees of freedom is larger than or equal to three. Roughly speaking, all hell breaks loose and they're extremely interesting systems. So in addition to having one, two, three, and four, there are multiple new features. First of all, orbits can become untangled. Another feature is that one can get chaotic behavior. And so chaos in the sense of dynamical systems doesn't mean what your dorm room looks like. It means 
sensitive dependence on initial conditions. That is that if you start with two systems with infinitesimally different initial conditions and let them evolve uh, by a three or higher dimensional dynamical system, it is possible that in the long time limit, these initial states, which are very close to each other, will diverge. And so this is what's called chaos, and it's a source of a lot of rich phenomenology. And another beautiful feature of higher dimensional system is the notion of strange attractors, that instead of an orbit getting attracted to a fixed point, as might happen in one dimension, it can get attracted to a complicated fractal set known as a strange attractor. So these are the types of behaviors that exist in, uh, in dynamical systems, linear, nonlinear, as a function of the dimensionality.